the position of a pixel on a screen would be defined by two numbers. It's a 2D thing. But like if you're making a 3D game, then you know the position of this object is going to have three numbers uh, in the world, in the simulated world, right? So three dimensions, like how far along is it this way, how far along is it that way, and how far along is it that way, right? And when you program a game, you're just always working with those three numbers. I was just curious, what would it be like if there were four numbers? Were you one of those kids who were like, as a teenager, would you make your own crappy little games or? Um, I didn't really have access to something that would let me program or something, but I would definitely like draw them on paper. Like I would have like notebooks that were basically the, you know, the manual for the game. I would make fake manuals. But there was no game. There was no game, but there definitely was like the description. It was basically like a design document, but I didn't know that that existed at the time. I was just like, well, I want to create a video game and that's what I know how to make is a, you know, a manual. This is Miga Kure, the actual game. I just had this image of what the game was going to be. And so I, I just sat down and made it. Did you, you don't just sit at a computer and start typing, do you? Like, do you draw a map, or do you like, do you write things on paper, or storyboard a game, or like, how? What's it like, look like at this point? Start typing. <laughs> I mean, it's not a game that's designed from the you know top down, right? It's just I'm making this thing, and I'm going to explore where it's going to lead me. And so at first, I just type the things that I know, and then it will give me more stuff, and then I'll react to those and like make different things based on that. So, so you're just sitting at a computer typing into the void? Yeah, that's that's all it is. And what happens? What does that look like? Is there like a little man that walks around or is it just... Yeah, it was a cube. It was a red cube in a field of bigger cubes. The first big game design problem is what do you do? You're in this four-dimensional world, great, but like <laughs> what does that even add to your game? Well, if you could move in four dimensions, what could you do? And one of the things is you have a wall, you can just go around it in the fourth dimension. And so to a three-dimensional being, uh, it looks like you're disappearing and appearing on the other side of the wall but you've just went, you just went around it. This is not the game yet. Well, it's almost the game, but it just, it's missing a dimension. Um, so it's just sort of an example of what the game would be like if it was just a 3D game. So you've got your character and he's trying to get on the other side of that wall, but he can't. But it turns out that he is on a two-dimensional plane within the three-dimensional world, right? There's thickness to the world that he didn't know about. You can see that there, there would be a way to go around the wall this way, right? But the guy is just 2D, so how do you let him move in 3D while still remaining on a two-dimensional plane? So he's like a thin pancake and he can't... Yes, and also he doesn't know about this direction. So the mechanic of the game is, is you press a button and it rotates the plane by 90 degrees so that now when you're moving this way, it doesn't mean the same thing. It means moving along the third dimension, so... So now he can't walk towards his girl. Right, but he can walk along the mysterious third dimension that he didn't know about before. And when you press the button again, it always rotates around the character. So now he's back to his original um, facing direction, but he's further along that way, right? So he can't see the wall. He can't see the wall. Like, if I go back to his perspective from within the plane, then you see like, oh, he's in this sort of the desert place and then there's rubble on the ground, but he can't see the wall because it's along the third dimension somewhere. So now he can just walk forward and you can see like he's going past the wall and then turn back again. So now he's back to the sort of sideways orientation where he can move along the third dimension. I move forward and I turn again, and now I'm on the other side of the wall, so I'm gonna go back to the inside view and I see like, oh, okay, I went around the wall. The thing is, he's only two-dimensional, so like that didn't sort of shock him too much, right? It's not like he suddenly could see the third dimension. He was just always moving in ways that were two-dimensional, right? And it's just the, the fact that he can turn which two-dimensional plane he's on that let him uh, move in three dimensions. Is that what you've done, except with upper gear? Yes, so it's Miga Kure. It's the same idea. You can turn 
this plane that you're on into a direction that you couldn't see at first. And that's how you navigate the fourth dimension. So same thing is you're pressing a button and it rotates your plane by 90 degrees. So now you're in sort of this uh, perspective where you can move between these parallel universes. You can move forward just like we did in the 2D case and press the button again. And now you're further along the fourth dimension, whatever that means. And there's still rubble on the ground where the wall was. And I can walk past the rubble. But the thing is, in the 2D slash 3D case, I could move the camera out so that you could see the perspective of a three-dimensional being, even though the two-dimensional character was stuck in his two-dimensional plane. In, in this case, we can't really do that, right? Because like, the universe the real universe is three-dimensional. So there's no way of like seeing all of it, uh, seeing all of four dimensions at once, right? So we're stuck in sort of this plane view. So now I'm, I moved past the wall. I press the button again to get back to the perspective of moving along the fourth dimension. I go back to the world that I started from and rotate back. But now I'm, I'm on the other side of the wall, so. How much time has gone into it so far? And five years total, I guess. Um, no, five years. Yes. Well, it's a hard game to make. There were a lot of challenges to be figured out as I was making it. Can I ask a silly question? You don't have to talk about this if you don't want to. But mm. how do you eat for five years when you're making a game like this? Is like a you've you've gone all in here, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, I just had some money saved up, I guess, and. Um, it was just me, mostly, just, you know, so I, I figured out how to survive. You're over here, and you're trying to get to that gate on top of the red block, but it's too high. So you need something to stand on, maybe over here or over here, in order to be able to get to it. You need a big step. Yeah, there's this building, but it's closed from all directions, so you're not going to be able to go in easily, but it turns out it's not actually closed from the fourth dimension. So you can just, just like in the previous level, you can just walk around the wall and get inside the building. Now I'm inside the building and I see that there's this block. Nothing is blocking this block to be moved in the fourth dimension. So what are you doing now? So I'm back to the sort of sideways view. Um, I can push the block along the fourth dimension and just to sort of see what happened. Now it's gone from this world. It's gone from the inside of the temple. <laughs> where is it? Well, I moved to this world where I can just push it forward. This is the same block, but looking at it along the fourth dimension. I'm moving it forward. I can move it back to the world that it started in. So now let's see what that looks like from this perspective, and now I see that I moved the block out of the temple. I can push it forward, and that's it. I mean, that looks pretty cool to me. Like, how far down the path are you? Uh, we're pretty far along. I mean, there needs to be more art, more like, you know, content to make the game look better, uh, maybe fix some of the lighting and things like that. Uh, there's some, still some level design to do uh, in sort of the advanced sections. Uh, but the, the beginning of the game is pretty solid. Uh, people can play through for a few hours. At what point do you start worrying that someone's going to pinch the idea? Well, oddly, I was really worried about it like two or three years ago. <laughs> but nothing really happened. And I think it's because it's a really hard game to make. And you don't even know if it's going to be that successful. And if you're good, I mean, that's my friend's theory. It's like, if you're really good enough to make that game, then you probably have your own ideas. And those are the ones that you want to do. You're always being asked about release date. What do you say? Well, I say when it's done. Um, but we're definitely, I feel like we're downhill now. Like we've, we're, we've figured out the hard problems. We're just making it now. We're just finishing it up. Um, but that can still take a long time, I don't know. How big's the code now? How big's the monster? I do not count. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is the code? Oh, it's C++. Uh, it's my own engine. Uh, you know, nobody's done 4D 
in that way before. 